Shalom, it's your brother Travis, and in this live stream, we're gonna get back on the topic that we we're talking about earlier, which is why pray without cease. Why should we pray without ceasing? That's the topic for tonight. <clears throat> Let's see who's in the building. So my wife Tony and is in the building. We have Kappa Naris in the house. Let's see who's gonna join in. In tonight's topic and let's see who was gonna rejoin because we were talking about it earlier I'm gonna share it out in the meantime and for all those who are here who are interested in such a topic you can stay tuned if you're not then you know you can find this live stream that can entertain you or in a live stream that you may be interested in my live stream is mainly mainly for the Saints mainly for Christians and those who are pursues pursuing such a lifestyle so let me show you this out in the meantime so tonight's topic why pray without ceasing and we're gonna get as usual for all those who know me we're gonna get into the scriptures to prove what I'm saying here about why we should pray without ceasing so for all those who are here who are interested in this topic, you can join in. You can get your Bible and follow me along when it comes to this topic. Most of my topics that I talk about, majority of my topics, is always Bible-based, always rooted in Scripture. Because when all is said and done, it doesn't matter what I say, it matters what, it matter what God says. What God said in his word shall live on long, af long after I leave. And so I rather utter what shall always stand, majority of the time. Of course, you may hear my opinion, you may hear my, talk about my experience and all that. At the end of the day, God's word of a man word, anytime. Let's see what's in the building. We have Venomous in the house. Javana in the house as well. Alright, good night, good night, good night. Greetings to you guys. God bless you. God keep you. And thank you for joining in. Your time is highly appreciated. Because one thing with the time. You cannot get back your time. Whenever, wherever you invest your time. You can never get back that time. Time is your life. And how you spend your life. Is how you spend your time. So if you waste your life. You actually waste your time. So when you're here. Taking the time to listen. I do not take that lightly. That's one. And I will do my best to bring. Something to you that can benefit your journey, especially walking the narrow path, especially being a Christian, a chosen one, or somebody who desire to walk such a path. All right, so that's what I'm here to do to serve. So, for everybody who's here, tap the screen so we can attract more viewers or share this out to any one of your brothers or sisters, pastors, apostles, evangelists, bishops, or elders. Because they will definitely be interested in such a topic. And probably they can teach it back to the people who they have um, a level of leadership over. We are all one body of Christ. So things that not everybody see it like that. Now Christianity has become a form of competition now. If you notice. Uh, Christianity has become a competition. Especially in the ministry. Especially in the part of ministry. Especially those who are saying that they are part of the fivefold. Majority of them are actually competing against one another right now. Who's better than who? Who can preach better than who? Who can teach better than who? Who have more anointing? You know, who have more, who know more scriptures? Who have the biggest church and the greatest following? You know, it's become a, it's become a, it's become a competition now. Nobody's seeing uh, themselves as one body under God, one body, one Lord, one Savior, one blood. That saves us all. One blood. One spirit. That go, that works in us and through us. To utter the words of God. One spirit that anoint us. So we can cast out demons. So we can speak in tongues. So we can create. We can do miracles and all that. That's one spirit. But the sad thing. Majority of the people who are in the fall. Who are in the ministry. Does not see it like that. They see it as a competition. On who is bigger than who. Who greater than who. And all that. I'm not here for that. I'm here to edify the body of Christ and I'm also here to try and save my own self. The Bible says that we should work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And that's what I'm trying to do while I'm serving my purpose. 
So as much as I, I'm here teaching, I'm also trying to teach myself too. All right, so guys, just tap the screen out. Just tap up the screen. If you're close to your phone or your tablet, I you just share this out. You know, everything that, you, that, that you're going to do here to, to support this live stream is absolutely free. Tapping the screen is free. Sharing is free. You don't have to send me any gift, any rose, any turkle, any cap, anything like that. It's totally free to support such um, such a live stream. So you can do that. So I'm going to give this about um, one more minute and then we'll get it started. The topic is why pray without ceasing. You know, the scripture said that we should pray without cease. I think it's in Thessalonians. We say pray without cease. But why should we pray without cease? We're going to get into those, to those topics. We're going to get into those points. Tonight, I'm going to open with some scriptures um, that talks about prayer. Thanks for all those are tapping the screen. Who was working, who was working your fingers. I can say that Beverly Prince is working your fi fingers. I can say that my wife is working her fingers as well. All right, guys. It's highly, highly appreciated. And your time is more appreciated. Because let me tell you this. When I preach or when I teach, and I see changes happening in people's life, that's more encouraging to me to continue to do this work. When people give me their attention and give me their time, that's something I truly appreciate and I want to deliver. Like I said, Ezekiel also is liking blessings to everybody on this life. I God bless you. God keep you. Just let me share this out as well to any brother or sister that you believe will be interested. Why pray without ceasing? There were some more people. There were some more people who joined on earlier. I'm kind of waiting to see if they're gonna join on as well because I gave them some scripture to read before um, they rejoin the live. So let me just share this out one more time. And then we're going to start with the open scriptures. And into the lesson. Alright, so for all those who are following, the following is highly, highly appreciated as well. You can see that Bolton Brown follow. Beverly Prince follow as well. God bless you. So, guess what guys? We're going to get started. All those who will probably join later on, they can watch this over on the YouTube channel. And for all those who cannot stay for the whole um, lesson, you can always subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's called Travis, the Chosen One on YouTube. You can go there and you can re-watch all the videos that I do on here. All the live streams that I do on here. So we're going to get into prayer, we're going to open with prayer, and then we're going to get into the lesson. So guys, join me in prayer. You don't, have to, you don't have to close your eyes or anything like that. If you want to watch me, you can do that. But you can close your eyes as well and join me in prayer as we unite here in Christ. Almighty Father God, Father God, I thank you. I glorify your name, O God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your presence tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your holy scriptures that, that, that is... Uh, instructing us of how to live in this time and space, in this dark and wicked world. Mighty Father God, I pray for each and everyone that's on this live stream, watching this live stream at this moment, Father God, that your Holy Spirit may work through me, O oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit may give me what I must say to edify each and every soul that's here under the sound of my voice. I pray for them and their family as well, that you may guide them, direct them and protect them. I pray that this session may be so, so edifying that their life will never be the same and that they may learn something new, O oh Father, that they can apply and also teach. I take this time to pray for the entire body of Christ, Lord Jesus, because there is division in the body of Christ. There is competition, there is a spirit of emulation. I pray against such spirit right now in the body. I pray that we, we all unite as you want us to do, as one body of Christ, serving each other, before you come because you're saying in your word oh lord that you come as a thief in the night and many of us will not be prepared for such time oh father god i pray that the body may be prepared oh lord that i may be serve as a vessel to help them prepare while i try to prepare myself i bless each and every soul that's on this live stream with me now we unite in the name of our lord jesus christ i you saying in your divine word that wherever two or more is gathered in your name 
you're in the midst. We believe your word for your word is true. And we believe that you're in the midst of us right now. Watching us edify each other and going spiritually together. I pray against every single witches and warlock that may try to come upon this live stream to interrupt it. I pray against all the works of the enemy. I break and I bind and I cast away every single work of the enemy at this moment right now. We pray, O oh Father God, that you cover this live stream under your blood and by your holy presence you arise and let all your enemies be scattered from this live stream. I pray that all those who are heirs to your kingdom may be here for the edification of such of such live stream and i pray oh lord god that may grow more spiritually in you through you and by you in the name of our lord jesus christ i pray and we all agree by saying amen amen and amen hallelujah glory glory to our father thank you lord i thank you jesus for your presence Amen. Beverly say amen. Thank you. We all come in agreement. Whatever we agree upon earth shall be done in heaven. Whatever we bind upon earth shall be bind in the heavenly places, meaning in spiritual places. And whatever we loose upon earth shall be loose in the heavenly realm as well. So that's why we all like, we all must agree. You don't have to even type here that you agree, but at least on your side, you say amen. All right. So God bless you, Beverly Prince, for being here. And God bless each and every one. Who is here tonight why pray without cease we're gonna pull some scriptures tonight i want to start off with ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 let's get into that scripture guys get your bible or at least get a notebook so you can write down these scriptures because when you leave off of this live stream you don't want to be a forgetful hearer a person that like what the bible talks about a person who go in front of the mirror and they look at their face Right, beholding their face, but by, by the time they leave from the mirror, they, it's like they don't even remember how they look. But you don't want to leave. You just want. You don't want to be a hearer. You also want to be a doer of the word. You don't want to just hear these things, but you truly really want to apply it to your life so you can truly change. Because change is not easy. It is not easy. You can be praying right now for change or something to change in your life right now. Right, and the same thing that you pray about, you you step out of your house and go do it. The same thing you pray that you don't want to do, you will end up step out of the house and do it. So change is not an easy thing. So when we are in the sessions, guys, we're here to try and grow spiritually. We're here to try and elevate spiritually while we're still rooted at the same time. And so get a notebook or get your Bible and follow along with me as well. You know, this is not just a session where you just come and hear somebody talk or scream or all that. And then you're just like, wow, that was so nice. And then you go on with your life. All right, because I shall is in the building as well. So let's read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Going to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. It says here, I'm going to start, we're going to read part B. I'm going to read the whole of it um, right now. So part, no, part A, sorry, of it. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in spirit. It says, say, pray always. So you pray always in prayer and supplication in spirit. We're talking about praying without cease and why we should pray without cease. One more scripture before we get on. We're going to go into Luke. Chapter 6, verse 12. Like I can see my wife put in um, the scriptures down there as well. So if you forget what I'm saying, you can always look at what my wife is posting there as well. Thank you very much, wifey, for being here and helping um, helping us here, serving each other. Let's read also Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Why we should pray. And it says here, and it came to pass in those days that he went into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. This was Jesus Christ in the flesh. He prayed all night in prayer to God. Why must we, must we pray without cease? The scripture says, why must we pray without cease? One point that we have here of why you should pray without cease is that Look, guys, we're in a war. 
So this is the number one reason why we pray without cease. Everybody knows the scripture already. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, right? But with principalities, with powers, that's in high places, with spiritual horses. I think everybody knows the scripture by now. I don't, have to, I don't have to read it out. I don't have to find it in the scripture to even read it to you. But one, peop one, peop one of the things that people don't know is that we are actually at war. And prayer is one of the ways that we fight this battle. And this battle is an everyday, all day thing. In Psalms chapter um, um, 91. Psalm chapter 91. I want to find a scripture here. I want to find a scripture. It's in Psalms chapter 91. I'm going to start that book, I think about verse 5. Verse 5 to about verse 7. And we're going to read that scripture. Let's find it. Psalms 91. And we're going to read from verse, about verse. Yeah, verse 5 to about verse 6. Listen to this. It says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Right? It says, The terror by night. Nor, by the ar nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasted at noon day. Now, look what's happening here, guys. I don't even know if people look into the scripture the way I look into it. But there's a there is a terror that happened by night. You know, there's a thing called the witch hour where people, where witches do their, 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 their witchcraft at certain hours, 12 o'clock hours. They, they send out spells, they cast spells and seek to destroy. Some people, some people don't even know that some of these accidents that are happening are not by mistakes. So witches are causing these things, which are causing people to, to, yeah, see my wife say it. Their spells and chants. So this is one of the, one of the um, the terror that happened by night. That's a warfare thing happening right, right there, you know, from the dark side. Look what scripture also say. Nor for the hour that fly it by day. Nor for the hour that fly it by day. So something's happening in the night, right? Something's happening even throughout the day. There's a war happening even straight throughout the day. Certain hours as well throughout the day. I learned this from I learned this from from a witch, from a farmer witch. There's certain things that happen throughout the day, especially like 12 in the day. There's certain things that manifest throughout the day. What they did the night before, seeking to manifest um, in the day. So some things happen also in the day. Not only in the night, there's a warfare happening, but also in the day. And then we go down to, to um, verse, um, verse 6, where it says, Now for the pestilence that walk in darkness, one, now for the destruction that wastes at noon day. So look at this. This is this is morning, noon, and night. This is a morning, noon, and night warfare happening, guys. And this is why we have to pray. This is why we have to constantly be in prayer. Sometimes, even if you don't know what to pray about, guys, you pray for the protection of your family, of the people that are in Christ, of your children. Your prayer for protection when it comes to your work. You guys, your prayer continually for protection. Your prayer warfare battles too. Your prayer against the kingdom of darkness. Your prayer against the arrows that may fly by day. By the, the pestilence that may walk in darkness. And the terror that waits at a new day. You're constantly being up. You're constantly praying. Because why? Why about the prayer without cease? We're constantly in a warfare. It's a constant warfare. The Bible clearly states here that there's something happening in the night. Something happens in the noon day and something happens straight throughout the day. There's always a warfare happening. Warfare is happening every day, all day. There's a war happening. Sometimes that war manifests even at problems in your in your in the job. Things are missing in. Things are being missing in job. Money are getting missing. Where it cannot be explained. And you know, people might say a dopey a take away and all them something there. But it's actually a spiritual warfare happening there. It's a spiritual thing happening there. Some places have joined making covenants with demons, with devils, with, with, with certain fraternities. And there's a warfare happening there. You know, the warfare can happen with you just meeting upon strangers. People who you don't know and who don't know you, but then just don't like you. The devil send them. And now you and them in a things 
over where you're not, not even in a things with, with them. There's a, con, there's a constant warfare. The warfare can happen even with your animals. Your animals are acting strange, acting certain ways. You don't know there's a demonic influence over those animals. Can't mean with your children. With your children, your child, your son, your daughter, start a certain attitude, certain vibe, some certain vibes that come from them. There's are certain things. There's a spirit behind that too. And so, guys, there's a constant war happening. There's a constant warfare happening. There's a constant battle happening. And this is why the Bible says, pray without cease. You pray without cease. Why pray without cease? Because we are at war. Let's go to one more scripture. Let's go to one more scripture. We're going to go into Matthew. The book of Matthew. That war is happening for our soul. So if you can go along with me, if you want to follow along with me, or if you want to write it down, you can go into the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 41. Chapter 26, verse 41. And it says here, Watch and pray. Le Come again. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The Bible says here, Christ says here, we should watch and pray that you not fall into temptation. The devil will constantly come to you with temptation. That's also our war. That's why we have to constantly be watching and praying. Temptation can come your way as a woman and as a man. Temptation can come your way constantly. And these temptations is all to pull you out of God. It's all for you to lose this battle, to lose this war. Because the moment you fall for certain temptation, you're at a loss. It doesn't mean that you're utterly defeated, but you are at a loss. As for instance... You not staying up, staying up in prayer, not being watchful and praying. You're, you're at the job, right? There's this man, or for instance, this woman, as a man, you see this woman, she always just certain way to attract certain men, always just in certain way, right? If you don't stay prayed up and stay in the spirit, this woman at any time can come and try to seduce you. And sometimes this seducing them over time. Right, they say one thing there, they say another thing there. They run one joke there, they run another joke over there. Right, but at the opportune time, all those things build up. And the next thing you know, you find yourself as a man start saying things to her. Start running certain jokes with her. Now the door is open. There's a, there's a temptation happening there. You're not being watchful and prayer. The next thing you know, before you even know it, you guys are somewhere sinning. You as the man cheating on your wife your good wife that, that's at home your good wife that is taking care of your children why you won't be village vigilant you, you're not watching and praying and you don't know that's actually that's actually a war happening there too that's actually a war happening when you when you cheat against your wife because that's gonna destroy something that god values god value marriage the bible said that marriage is honorable unto all and the bed undefiled but adulterers and whoremongers shall be judged and so if somebody know that you are married you're a married man or even a married woman and they want to bring you off into cheating on your wife or your husband right they're actually warring against the devil is using them to war against even your own marriage to war against something that god values to war against something that god cherishes and want to see each and every individual do upon this earth the devil is always against um god and his sins always against god's purpose the devil is anti-god so everything that god cherishes the devil don't cherish and so that is a war and that's why we say you pray without cease that's why we say prayer without ceasing. Guys, do not ever believe that you can do this on your own. Don't ever believe that you can do this thing on your own, guys. It's You cannot do it off your own strength most of the time. You cannot. And don't ever fall into that deception of, of being so self-confident that you believe you can do it on your own. There's no such thing as self-confidence. You have to be confident in God. God confident at all times over self-confidence. I'm not confident in myself so much to put myself in certain situations i always do my best to stay prayed up 
And this is the reason why we pray without cease. So that's number one. Number one, we pray without cease because we are at war. Constantly at war. War for our marriage. War for our children. War for our job. War for our spiritual growth. War for our soul. It's a constant war. It's a constant battle. And the scripture that, that, that we share here was Psalms 91 verse 5 to about verse 7 I believe or verse 6. I will also share Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. We're going to go into one more scripture before we move on to the next one. Guys ensure that you're writing down these scriptures. Remember we're here to grow. We're going to go into the book of James now. James. Let me see if I can find it here. James after Hebrew after Hebrew is James, right? We're going to go to chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse, verse 13. So James chapter 5, verse 13 says here, Is anyone among you afflicted? In some translation, it says, Is anyone, of you, anyone among you troubled <laughs> or in trouble? He said, let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. But the part that I want to talk about here is, is any one of you afflicted? Let him pray. Are you going through any afflictions? Any trouble? Pray. It's a constant war. And guess what? All of us are going through some form of affliction, some form of trouble, some form of battle. And what the Bible says you should do? Pray. So number one reason why we should pray without cease is that we are at war and if anybody don't know that we're at war you you are a sleeping christian right now you are sleeping christian if you don't know that, that we are we are at war constantly this war is happening even with the music's music that is playing all right then number two the number two reason why we pray without cease is that it is expected of us to pray the scripture says Christ said to his disciples, when you pray, he never said that if you pray, or if you feel like praying, the scripture say, when you pray. And when a person say, when, that clearly means that he expects that you should be praying. Prayer is expected of every Christian man and woman and child. Prayer is your power. Prayer, your prayer life is a power life. And if you're low in your prayer life, you're low in your power life. And so this is one of the main, this is one of the reasons why we must be praying without cease. Because it's expected of us to pray. It is expected of us. It's so funny where when people are in trouble, one of the first things they want to do is seek outside help rather than seek the help from the Almighty. Rather than call upon God and ask Him to deal with this, to help you in this in this situation. It's so funny that the moment there's some type of trouble, we're looking for physical help. It's like we're not looking, we're not looking to God anymore. It's like we don't have true faith in God. You have people talking about God. You have people talking about God. Can talk about God all day. But the moment trouble come, the moment as we talk about in Psalms, um, Psalms, um, ninety-one about the pestilence and the things that happen at noon day, and at the moment these things happen, guess what's happening? There's no more God. In there, in in the picture, everybody knows how to run in, calling sister this, calling sister that. I'm not saying that you cannot seek the seek the help from from other people, right? I'm not saying that we cannot pray for one another because we should be praying for one another. But the moment the help happen, the moment the the trouble happen, the moment the friction come, there's no let me turn to God for this. Hardly hardly like that. Somebody's running for some physical help. Somebody want to find. Somebody want to find the biggest prophet to go and pray for them. You know, somebody want to go and find a church where they hear a person working the greatest miracles. It's like God has not, it's like God has, it's like people are looking at it as if God have, 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 have his favorites on earth. And that, you know, there's certain people that you, God, God can talk to, talk to, you know, God can talk to, them can talk to God on, on their behalf. As if you can't go and talk to God for yourself. As if you can't call upon God for yourself. You know, the Bible says that our mediator to God is Christ. So the only way we approach, to approach God is through Christ. Not through any pastor. 
Not true pastor this and pastor that. Not true pastor whoever they want to call themselves. But true Christ. That's what the Bible says. Approach. We have a priest. A high priest. As in the order of Melchizedek. And we should approach this throne with confidence. Knowing that we have such a high priest. So when you're in trouble. Whenever things are not making sense. Don't just don't go run to a physical man. The Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in princes and all that. But we we shall trust in who? The Lord. And so if you believe in in God, if you if you if you truly if you truly believe in those words, turn to God. The first person that you turn to is God. I'm not saying that God wants, can, cannot send people to your way and all that. But when the first help, the first person that you call upon is your father. Right, guys? Is your father. This is why we pray without cease. Praying without ceasing. Let's go to some scriptures here as well. So number one reason why we pray without cease is because we are at war. And number two reason why we pray without cease is because it's expected. It's actually expected of you to pray. How can you find a non-praying Christian? Is there such a thing as a non-praying Christian? I'm not sure. Luke. We're going to the book of Luke now. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. I'm going to start this. We're going to read verse 1. It says here, And he spoke a parable unto, unto them, to this end, that men are to always pray, right? And faint not. That's Luke 18 verse 1. It says again, let's read it. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end that men ought, men ought to ought always to pray. Always. That's what the Bible says now. Always. And faint not. It is expected, guys. It is expected of you to pray. Also in Matthew chapter 6 verse 7. Let's read that part. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Matthew 6, verse 7. I just want to read this. It says here. Let's re re read part of it. Part of it says, But when you pray. I said that earlier, right? When you pray. I don't see if right here. I'm not sure if you can see this. No, you can't really see it. But I don't see if right here in the Bible. I don't see maybe here. Guys, if, if you are reading your Bible right now, let me know if you see if in your in your in your in your holy text. Let me know if you see maybe in your holy text. Because I don't see it in my one. I'm reading the King James Version. Which, which, which one are you reading? I don't see any if when but are no well, let me say the when. I don't see no if maybe probably here. It says here, but when you pray, let's read on. Use not vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they should be heard, or should be heard for their much speaking. But the Bible clearly states here, when you pray, when you pray, when you pray, guys, it is expected of you to be in constant prayer. 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 So that's number two reason why we pray without ceasing because it's, it's an expectation. It's expected. So number one reason why we pray without cease, we are at war. As somebody has a spiritual war. Yes. Um, as Cassandra. Cassandra is a spiritual war. It's a spiritual war happening. There's a spiritual warfare happening. And it manifests in various forms. And I want to go on, before I move on, I want to say that sometimes these spiritual wars is not happening because somebody is setting something out for you. You need to realize that spiritual war happened for, mi for myriad of, a lot more reasons. Spiritual war can be happening in your life because you're probably putting on certain demonic clothing. That might sound strange, but it's true. Spiritual warfare can happen in your life because some of you probably are doing certain practices that you, don't, that, that you never knew was attracting demonic forces like burning sages and burning candles and using crystals to get rid of bad vibes and you know 
meddling with tarot cards and seeking after horoscopes and all these things these things have invite another god in your life another another demon in your life yoga practices is another way of attracting demons i used to practice yoga and they talk about raising your consciousness to a higher level what they really say in code is that you're actually attracting demonic forces that will that, that bring certain awareness and knowledge to you that's how when i used to practice and when i used to practice um yoga i was reach, reaching to a point where i could see certain things i reached to a point where i was attracting certain things my wife says here send back to send that prayer that's another thing that i invite more more battle your way doing the send it back to send that prayer is a, is actually a it's actually a witchcraft practice if you know about the origin of sending back to sender prayer, you would not do it. Send it back to sender comes from the occultic practices where they talk about the god of thunder. In the in the year, anybody talking about the god of thunder? That's the god of send it back to sender prayer. Somebody said, What if you see mermaid? I'm not sure if you see mermaid in real life or if you see it in dreams, but if you see mermaids that go for sure that the, the marine kingdom is after you. The marine kingdom wanted to work for them and they're seeking alliance and, and, and some form of allegiance with you. I know that many people might not like what I say when I say send it back to send a prayer is 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 not. If you see it in real life, yeah, they're after you, um, Akin. And what you should do, you should be praying against them and their activity in your life. Praying against them and their destiny that they that they that they're planning out for your life. Praying against all that they wrote and ensure Akin. Ensure that you live in a holy and sanctified life as best as you can live. Do not do not have sex out of marriage. Do not do anything wrong that you know that's, that's, that's not in the commands of God. Because the moment you're sinning, you're opening up doors for demons. Especially the sexual sin. Because all other sins are done out of the body. But the sin of sexual immorality is done against your body. And when you get involved in sexual immorality, even in masturbation or watching pornography, it invites invite very strong demons. And demons are gangs. It's when one demon comes, he can bring another one come too. So ensure that you repent of any sin that you have committed and go before the Father and tell him clearly the sin that you commit. You don't go there and say, forgive me, Father, because um, I've sinned. Yeah, you know, see your sin. Just be open and honest about your sin. Father God, forgive me for my fornicating ways. I've been sexing with this young man without a marriage because I like him or whatever. But right now I come before you, I'm asking that you wash me clean from his sin. For he said in your word that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I come before you right now, Father, as a fornicator. And forgive me for my fornication. Also forgive me because me a master bit. Forgive me because me they are watch the pornography and I get stimulated by it. Just be clear and clean about that, guys. Go to God genuinely with a open heart. Go to God genuinely with a sincere heart about anything that you are um, doing. Just go before Him. That's all He really wants to know is repentance. True repentance is being true truthful and honest that's why the bible says, i seek those for worship him in spirit and also in truth brother prince say here um is using lavender oil wrong it's all it all come down to your purpose are you using it for spiritual reasons are you just using it for probably say um like for instance if you have an inflammation problem are you a person that are you an athlete that when you're probably exercise you have certain information problems uh, like amino acid build up in your muscle and you want to use that to help with the circulation if it's that you're doing it for great but if no if you're using that now for spiritual thing like a spiritual practice to say you're gonna cleanse yourself from certain spirits and say you're gonna attract good luck and all that that's when it's a no-no that's when it's a no-no you don't use oil and salt and sugar for any farmer blessing or taking away a curse. I'm not saying you cannot use olive oil. You can definitely bless olive oil. You use it for anxiety. Uh, what you need to do, Prince, 
get into more worship go into more worship go into more reading of the scriptures um, and take this very serious um family take this very very serious Go into more worship. Even if you don't know worship songs like me, you will never know much worship song. And my wife introduced me to more worshiping. But even if you don't know worship songs like that, like know them word for word, play your worship songs. Listen to what they're saying. And if your heart resonates with what they're saying, just say amen or hallelujah or thank you, Jesus, while you're in that worship. Get, get more worship inside of you guys. They are going through anxiety and depression. Turn on some worship music and just start giving God worship. Just start, just start to give praises to his name. Just have to honor his name. I just see the changes that's happening. Because anxiety and deep, especially anxiety and depression is a demonic oppression. A demonic suppression. That's what anxiety and depression is. And so for all those who are here are going to uh, some, some sometimes going to anxious times and feeling depressed. Get first of all get into prayer and then go off into some and go off into some worship. I guess see what happened. See Abby here said, trust me. <laughs> I trust yeah, trust me, Abby. I was there too. When I used to go to depression back in the past, yoga was my thing. But I realized that yoga was only um, making my life worse, causing more demonic force to be around me. No worship is my thing, and a whole lot of prayer. Abby says worshiping is really what works. It really works, guys. It really, really works, and I'm so happy that I found a wife that is specialized in worship. I'm, I specialize in prayer, but my wife specializes in worship. She's right here on the live stream with me as well. Her name is Tony, and right there, you guys can also follow her page there we're all here to edify the body of christ to edify each other and build up each other in the, the most holy faith in these dark days that's what we're here for we're here to serve the body of christ and serve those who truly want to serve god we're here to serve you that's what we're, what we're here for we're not here for clout we're not here we're not asking you to send any gift our way or anything like that we take our time to serve the body of christ because God has been so good to us. If never for God, we wouldn't even be here talking to you. Same thing for all of us who are here. And because God has been so good to us, we're seeking to make ourselves a living sacrifice unto God. Because this is our reasonable service. We're seeking to make ourselves into such a clear that God may mold us into what he wants us to be. And this is one of the things that we're doing. This is one of the things that we can do. This is one of the ways we can show our appreciation for God. Is to serve his bridegroom. And his bridegroom is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm serving. We're here serving you right now. Hallelujah. All right. So we're going to go into number three. Why we pray without cease. Number three reason why we pray without cease is that it, prayer keeps you in alignment. Guys. <laughs> It's the first thing in the morning you want to do a prayer and worship session. I see Abby say you're spending time, spending time in his presence. You want to do that. One of the first thing in the morning you want to do. Sister Sue, greetings to you and blessings to you as well. One of the first thing you want to do in the morning is not take up your phone and check no notifications. It's not looking um on the latest news or anything like that. One of the first thing you want to do, guys, is get into prayer especially when it comes to even worship just praise the most high for, for, for causing to wake praise the most high for causing to wake up this morning give him thanks and heartfelt thanks that you can see that you can live move out of your being in him the bible says that this is the day that the lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it one of the first thing you want to do is acknowledge that this is the day that the lord has made and we rejoice and be glad in it and you want to set a time guys in the morning we just pray first and pray about the day. Because this I got set things in alignment. Have you ever realized that? Some of you know this. Majority probably know this and probably fall off the habit. That when you start praying in the morning, you set the tone of the day. It's like things start to happen. Oh God wants to happen. Things go so much more smooth when you start your day with prayer. Things fall into place so wonderfully. Things just have to truly happen. And guess what happened now? Because I get so ex I get so excited about the good things that are happening now. 
that will come off of the habit. But try to get back into the habit of praying and putting things before God. Yeah, I'll be saying it here. I'll be saying it really does when you commit the, the day. Yeah, it, it things really fall into place. I'm telling you. Sister Sue say here, asking the Holy Spirit to teach you throughout the day for his direction. Amen. Amen. I say sometimes you want to open your mouth to pray and nothing comes out. Yeah, some of the times you're under a, a, a dark cloud. What you need to do when you're under a dark cloud is just give thanks. If you don't even want to say, God, you know, um, may I go through this day and, you know, more and do this and more. Just start giving thanks. Just start to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you. I just say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just have to get into it. Just have to get into it and see the changes. Just have to get into that and you see the changes. Just have to just give thanks and glory to God. Just have to do that. You don't have to ask for nothing. You don't have to ask for nothing. You don't have to ask for nothing. Just have to give thanks and praise. Just have to praise Him. And see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Primo say, um, good night. I do this every morning. All praises to God for that. All right, Abby, you're on the right track. God bless you and God keep you. And I pray you continue to fight the good fight of faith in Jesus' name. Prince said, the thing is people are always looking for perfect prayer. Yeah. There's no perfect prayer, guys. There's no, yeah, me go ensure me put the words right. Make ensure that the words are right and make ensure no. The spirit the spirit will 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 put place things before God in according to his will on your behalf. That's how it goes. Amen. Amen and amen. So happy to have you guys here. So happy that you guys are here sharing in this exhortation as well. God bless you. God keep you. So let's go to a scripture before we move on to the next reason of why we pray without cease. We're going to go into the book of Proverbs. We're going to go into Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. Let me tell you, prayer truly set the order of the day. It's when you pray, it get rid of dodgy people. It get rid of certain people out of your way. Certain people that the devil was setting to come in your way, it get rid of them. You end up saying so you reach too early so they can't so they can't get to you. Or you reach too late so then gone left you. This is how the spirit works. That's what the Bible said. Trust in the law with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But what? In all your ways. In all your ways, what you do? You acknowledge him. And when you acknowledge him, what the Bible says, do? He shall re he shall direct your path. Not in some of your ways, but in all your ways, you acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen, sister. So, in all your ways, you acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Listen what Proverbs chapter 16 verse 25 says here. It says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. So there is a way that look right unto a man, right? But the end thereof are the ways of death. You see, there's a way that may seem right unto us when we're entering upon a day. There may, there, there, there's a path that may seem right unto us. And that's why it's vitally important for us to be praying. Because certain things may seem right unto us, guys. Something might seem like the right plan for the day. The right mission for this day. And that thing can lead you to a destructive path. And that's why it's vitally important for us to what? Trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. Why? Because there is a way that seems right unto a man. Right? But the end thereof are the ways of death. So lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, let's stick to the scripture. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Abby say, I came here for a right reason. I'm telling you, Abby, you truly came here by the will of God. Because I've been praying for you and praying for people like you. Before I came on this life, I pray for all the body of Christ to be here, to be edified for their journey. To be edified in this dark time because we're living in the last days where things are getting rougher and rougher for the saints. 
rough and rough for people who are calling upon God. And we need each other. We need each other more than ever more to build up our most holy faith. To straighten each other. Iron sharpening iron. And that's why you're here. And that's why all of you are here right now. Because I pray to meet you. I pray that, I may, that you may see me and be edified by it. You pray for me, please. I feel broken sometimes. Um, Sister Sue, I'm going to pray for you. I've been praying for you. The funny thing, I've been praying for you. But I'm going to pray a specific prayer for you very soon. You don't worry about that. You definitely don't. Hallelujah. You, don't, you definitely don't worry about that, Sister Sue. After this, we're going to end this one with prayer as well. Let's go to the next reason of why we pray without ceasing. The said, Dave, what is that? Number one. Number four. Number four reason why we pray without cease is that prayer builds you up. Prayer truly builds you up. Let's go to a scripture that talks about that right away before we even get into anything else. We're going to go into the book of Jude. That's the book before you reach Revelation. That's the book before you reach Revelation. Jude. Jude. Or Jude. And we're going to go now into verse 20. It says here, But ye, beloved, that's you, my brothers and sisters, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Let's just say again, Jude, Jude, basically Jude 20. There's no chapter 1, but Jude 20. It says, But ye, beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Guys, you continue to build up yourself. In, with prayer, you're building up yourself. There's a scripture that says that even if you have tongues, you should pray that tongues to yourself because tongues is to edify you. While prophecy is to edify the church, tongues is to edify you. You pray to build up yourself, to build up yourself in the most holy faith. Prayer builds you up. So many times you need to pray over yourself. So many times you need to pray the full armor over yourself because the full armor the armor is not a physical armor. When the Bible says, you should put on your armor. Put on the full armor of God. You cannot go to a store and say, Guys, who sells the shield of faith? Where, where can I get the shield of faith to buy? Where can I get the, the, the helmet of salvation? How much, is, how, much is, how much is for the helmet of salvation? How much that cost me? <laughs> you cannot go there and say, I need the belt of truth. How much is that? You cannot go nowhere and find and find. You cannot purchase it. So that go for sure that is something spiritual. It is a spiritual thing. So you pray the full armor over your body. Or armor over yourself. You pray the you pray the helmet of salvation. You pray the shield of faith over you. It's spiritual. It's not a physical thing. Say so I'll be here laughing, it's true. <laughs> it's a spiritual thing. So you pray that body armor over you. You pray the breastplate of righteousness over you so that you can be built up, so you can be even protected because the Bible says you put on the full armor of God so that you can you may you may quench the darts or the wires of the devil. And so you want to be praying over yourself. Yes, it's a covering, it's a protection, and it's also a battle suit because the Bible also talks about the sword. The sword, which is what? The word. So you want to use also the sword. You see, each time you use the word of God, you're swinging a sword in the spiritual realm that you cannot see. The moment you're using the word of God, you're swinging a sword, God. God's word is power. And so it's vital for, important for us to even learn the word as, as well. So pray. Pray and build up yourself. Build up your most holy faith. I will say we are... We are we in warfare. Yeah, we in warfare time. Daily. Hourly. I'm not sure if you were here earlier to talk about we talk about Psalm chapter Psalms chapter um, 91. That talks about the pestilence um in the day. What I mean the noon noon day, what I'm not night. That's a constant battle happening there. Man, noon and night. So we're in a we're in a warfare. That's why we should pray. So we can build ourselves up. Prayer is to build you up. You build yourself up in the most holy faith. Continue to pray. Everybody who's here, don't just listen to this man telling you that, yeah, prayer is important. Put God to the test. Put God's principles 
to the test and say what mm. a matter of fact i'm gonna invite i'm gonna invite each and every one who is here who want to take on this challenge we want to do this challenge where we're gonna pray we're gonna get up an hour early an hour early and have an hour of power with god an hour of power with the almighty where we take this time to talk to god and build a relationship with him and to pray and to worship and to at least read something from the scripture if it's in one chapter a day anybody what i want that challenge let me know i want to if you want i can, I can add it to my group and anytime you, you you accomplish that that hour of power in the morning you just text in the group say done or text in the group say hour of power or something like that because it's vitally important for us to now take up spiritual disciplines. Just like when you're in the Olympics or wherever you are. Wherever you're, that you're doing. Right? You have, there's a discipline. There's a discipline that we need. And we need to have holy habits. It's just like we get up, we brush our teeth, or wash our face, our beard. These are some, some physical habits that keep, keep, keep us, um, phys our physical hygiene intact. We have our spiritual hygiene in the morning as well. And our spiritual hygiene is worship, prayer, Bible reading, and sometimes just praying over yourself and praying over your day. Oh, yes. I think I'll have to create a group. I think they can, they can create, create, a, create a group. We can create a group also on TikTok here. I'm gonna find out we can create a group somewhere we where we all can communicate. But guys, take on the challenge. I wanna go to one more scripture. Take the scripture in. Take the scriptures in. Because man shall not live by bread alone. You should not live, you should not live by what you're eating and drinking alone. But by the word of God, by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. That's what Christ says. That man shall not live by bread alone. Take in the word. Let's go to Romans. The book of Romans chapter 8. The book of Romans chapter 8. I want to go to verse, verse 26. Verse 26. It says here. Likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Infirmities mean weakness. For we know not what we should pray. For as we ought. So some of we, I saw I think Brother Prince was talking about it earlier. We said sometime we're praying and we don't know how to pray. We don't even know if we should have a perfect prayer. But here what the scripture says. Let's read it again. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings. Which cannot be uttered. So the scripture, what is the scripture? The spirit actually makes intercession for us. If you don't know how to pray, still pray and pray for your heart because the spirit will make intercession for you. So if you don't even know how to pray, what to say, and all that, still pray because the spirit will make intercession for you and your behalf. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. You don't have to. You don't have to. You, have to, you don't have to know how to pray like any apostle or anybody that you see on the internet. Pray your prayer with a sincere heart to God, and always pray, and pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what do you want to say? Yahshua, Yahshua, Imashiak, or Yahweh Shai, or whatever like that. You still pray in the name of the Messiah because there's only one way to God, and it's through His Son. And if you deny the Son, you have denied the Father. Christ is the way, the truth, and He is the life. I'll be saying, yeah, the Spirit will lead us. Amen. It's facts. So that's another reason why we pray without cease. Is that prayer builds us up. It builds you up. It's like, it's a form of charging up. It's a form of power up. You know, people say they, they, they load up. <laughs> people load up rings, but we load up with prayer. People load up their ring and say they're protected and then guided and whatever. But when, we, when we, our loading up is prayer, is speaking of ourselves, is speaking life into ourselves, speaking life into our situations. Prayer builds you up. But I Prince say here, even before and, and con yeah, even before and after consuming dinner, yeah, you have to pray, you have to bless the food. 
because the enemy the enemy the enemy is basically doing a whole lot of things guys what are the things the enemy is doing right now that most people don't even know the warfare is not just happening happening like you know physically it's happening even with the food that we're eating the things that we're watching all of that the warfare is on and more people most of us are blind to this warfare i'm telling you the warfare is happening in many many ways let us continue so the number one reason why we pray without cease is that we are at war we all know that number two reason why we pray without cease is because it is expected of us to pray number three reason why we pray is because prayer keep us in alignment number four is that prayer build us up and number five reason why we pray i, I think i kind of talk about that in number three too you know but this set the order of the day prayer sets the order of your day so in number three i say it keeps you in alignment but also, I want, I want to separate it when it comes to setting the order of your day. Because I want to emphasize on the, on, 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 the, on the importance of you getting up in the morning. And the first thing that you want to do is pray. Don't jump up on TikTok. Don't find TikTok. Don't go look for no message to reply to. But you make four, if you even force yourself for the, for the first three days before you fall into the habit, you want to start off with just with prayer. Don't get up and then I run, I go look for your phone. Get into this holy habit of acknowledging God first. And let me tell you, it's going to set the order of your day. It's going to set the order of your day. Let's go into, let's go into um, Psalms. Let's go into the book of Psalms. My wife will be posting it down there in the comment section as well. So you guys can look for the scriptures if you want to write them down. So go into the book of Psalms chapter 37 verse 5. Where it says here, it said, commit. It says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. I want to tell you guys that you commit even your day unto, the, unto God. And he will deal with it for you. He will put, he will bring your goals to pass. So prayer set the order after day and the reason why i put that there guys is to choose is to try and emphasize on your the first thing that you want to do and even the last thing that you want to do too is to get into prayer 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 the number six reason of praying without cease is that prayer glorifies god so as i say when we're talking about prayer prayer don't, don't have to be you asking for things all the time just going to god when you want something <laughs> going to god begging for things but prayer can also mean that you're glorifying god prayer glorifies the almighty so some of the time when you're in prayer you don't have to be asking for anything because guess what god knows what you know what you want long before you ask him god knows what you want long before you ask him so some of the time when you're in prayer that prayer should be a form of thanksgiving Right, I'm gonna pull a scripture. So, guys, when you even when it comes to even uh, making your utterance, you don't have to utter your wants or your needs or your goals to God all the time, but glorify Him because He deserves all the glory. He made us for His good pleasure, so you glorify Him. That's one of the reasons why you're constantly in prayer. We're gonna go into the in Colossians, Colossians, the book of Colossians, chapter four, verse two. Colossians 4 verse 2. That's C L O S S I A N. <laughs> I believe. Alright, somebody. Shalom, sister um, Shirley. Somebody say here. Can you please write the reasons to pray? I'm taking notes. Alright. Um Tony and will will Tony and will, will be we're gonna recap as well so you can stay for the recap as well. So number one is the reason why we praise God we are we are at war. Number two is that it is it is expected. Number three, prayer keeps you in alignment. Number four, 
prayer builds you up. Number five, this set the order of your day. And number six, it glorifies God. Prayer glorifies God. For all those who are here, let's ensure that when you come up the live stream, that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can watch this, you can re-watch it, and you can also share it to the body of Christ. You can also share it with your brother and sister, share it with your pastor and your apostles and all the prophets and all the people who are in the fivefold who are here serving the body of Christ as well. We are all here to edify each other and to strengthen each other. God bless you, um, desire travel. So we're going to find the book of Colossians now. Here is that book again. So we have Corinthians. We have Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. It says here. Continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving continue in prayer yes and watch in the same with thanksgiving the bible also says you should not worry about anything but in all things you pray and with thanksgiving and supplication unto god that's one of the reasons why we pray without cease now, the other reason why we pray without cease is that it's a way to empower others. It's a way of empowering others and strengthening others. My goodness, I could stay on this one the whole night when it comes to praying for others. Some of the times you should not be praying all only for yourself, but praying for others. Pray for others. This is one of the ways you build up other people. That's why I, when, I, when I came on here, I started to pray for you. Before I came on here, I pray for you. And even while I'm on here, I pray. Because that way of building up others. Some people can be going through some things and by your prayer, you break such bondage. I'm telling you. Let us go to some scriptures. This one is beautiful. This one is absolutely beautiful. And I'm praying that everybody that's on this live stream may truly leave this live stream truly edified truly powered up and truly ready to tackle this new week coming i pray that the father may guide direct and protect everybody under the sound of my voice in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray i believe i know amen let us continue let's go to some scripture we're gonna go my mighty god where can i start let's go into the book of acts Let's go into the book of Acts. Go, go into Acts chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse 4. So Acts chapter 12 verse 4. And when he appre apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaterans of soldiers to keep him he's talking about peter here intended after easter to bring him forth to the people peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer look at this guys <laughs> i love this one this is verse five in a verse five verse five now peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing jesus of the church unto god for him Right? And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Remember, they were praying for him. Watch this now. And behold, the, Lord, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and touched Peter, right? And, and raise him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chain fell off from his hands. The chain fell off all because of the, the, the presence of an angel. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind up thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, 
cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wist not that was and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but he thought it he was a vision. He was in a vision. So he, so all that's happening now. Yes, I think he was in a vision. He thinks something spiritual happened. Was something physical actually happening? But I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there. I want to put the emphasis on that when Peter went off into prison. Verse 5, part B says, But prayer was made without ceasing of God unto God. Um, without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Sometimes our brothers and sisters are going through some things under some chains. And prayer will break those chains. When you pray for somebody, guys, the spirits, the angels, the, the Bible says that the angels are ministering spirits. They are here to minister unto us and to help us. When you pray for somebody, you pray for somebody in the body of Christ. When you pray for a brother or a sister, you are charging up angels on their behalf. You are you're pulling on heaven on their behalf. And the most I will make a way for them. That's why it's vitally important for us to be praying without ceasing, guys. To break the chains that may be around some, some of our brothers and sisters. To help them to go through the struggle of what they're going through. To build them up also in the faith as well. So if you're a prayer warrior, if you're, if you're, if you're a person that loves prayer, you should be calling upon heaven on the, on the behalf of your brothers and sisters continually. Right? I've met brothers and sisters. I've met I have met brothers and sisters who it's like they know they know I'm praying for them. Cause like they say, Brother Travis, <laughs> you must be praying because I see things are changing. Yeah, I'm i I'm in secret, I'm praying for them. Each and every person that, that, that I meet, you don't might even know. But I be praying for you. People call, yeah, I know that you're praying. I go down on my knee and I pray. Continually from brothers and sisters, and things happen, things change, you know. But this is one of the reasons why we pray without cease. It's not just for ourselves, it's not just for our warfare, but also we pray to empower our brothers and sisters as well in the body. We're gonna go to some um, more scripture. There's so much scripture that we can read. I'm gonna read about two more, and then I am going to give you some more scriptures that you can. Pull on for more precept. Let's, what, what we can do again? Let's go into John. The book of John chapter 17 verse 15. Book of John chapter 17. It's just a blessing to be able to truly pray for your brothers and sisters. It's, it's truly a blessing, um, Sister Shirley. Sometimes I'm praying for people. And I literally feel what they're going through. I literally feel what's happening to them in the spirit. I can feel sometimes when sometimes they're even battling with unforgiveness. And I pray about them and I realize that, man, that person actually needs to forgive somebody. And that's why you pray. And if you're spiritual and strong in the spirit, when you're praying for people, you will see and know what they're going through. So we're going to read John chapter 17 verse 15. It says here, I pray not, this is Jesus Christ praying for his disciples. And it says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou keep them from the evil. Christ was praying for his disciples and he said, Father, I pray that you don't take them out of the world, but that you keep them from evil. This is one of the prayers that we should pray for our brothers and sisters. That you keep them from evil. Keep, bro, keep Sister Shirley from evil. Sister, Sister um, flowers from evil you know you keep them from the evil one wherever they are working protect them oh father god from every witchcraft attack that's happening there protect them and keep them there you know you pray for your brothers and sisters because this is how you empower people in your faith empower them empower them one more scripture <laughs> before we move on man i could spend the whole night on this one guys when it comes to praying for each other we're going to go now to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 8. Right? Many people pray about just money. They pray about 
this, they pray about that. Every day they want to pray, pray about blessing. I'm not saying nothing not wrong, wrong with blessing. But what about your brother? What about your sister that's struggling? What about that person that you see at church that, uh, that, that is struggling at the moment? That you see they have on just uh, um, this one shoe that is tearing out. Right? What about the marriage of um, your brother that you see is deteriorating? They're constantly fighting. You see the wife, you yeah, fat up and all of that. What about these people? You should be praying for them as well. What about your pastor who is going through warfare on your behalf to preach the gospel to you? You don't know how much Jezebel and Delilah is coming his way to try and destroy him and destroy the ministry that probably you are under. What about them? You know, what about that man that you see on the road that's struggling continually? What about that person? What about that? Pray. You should, you should also be praying for them as well. Let's read Ephesians chapter 1. What's my wife, my wife say here again? Chapter 1, verse 8. It says here. Chapter 1, verse 8. Wherein he had a... No, this is not it, you know. Wherein he had a bound towards us prudence. No, it's not. This is not the scripture. Alright, forgive me for that, guys. It's not the scripture. I think it's Ephesians chapter 6, right? Oh yes, it is. My my apologies. Ephesians chapter six, verse eighteen. I'm doing all the talking. <laughs> Ephesians chapter six, verse eighteen says here: praying always with all prayer and supplication in spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, for all the people who are in the faith. You should be praying for them as well. When the Bible says saint, the saint does not mean a perfect person, a person without flaws, a person that cannot make mistake or nothing like that. A saint actually means the set apart one. Somebody who is set apart. That's the meaning of a saint. Somebody who is set apart. Striving to be holy. Trying to live differently from the world. That's a saint. Somebody who is set apart. Desire say. Uh, how can I watch this video again? Um, Desire Travel, you can go on my YouTube channel. It's called Travis, the Chosen One. I'm going to repost that on YouTube. I'm going to repost this on YouTube. And there's more videos that I do here on various lessons as well. So I'm going to repost it probably in the morning based on how long it takes to process or later down in the night. So you can go there, Travis, the Chosen One. On YouTube and look you cannot miss it because my my beard always give me away <laughs> my beard always give me away so you can definitely go there and you will see the bearded man the Christian that look like a, that look like a Muslim all right let's read something here let's answer a question before we move it along because we're almost finished but I can talk about I can ask can you explain Luke chapter 21 verse 16 and let's read it here and it says ye sh and ye shall and ye shall be betrayed both by parents brethren and king folks and friends and some of you shall be caused to be put to death this is what we will suffer as christians let me tell you the moment you are chosen the moment you choose to serve god guys your warfare will even start off in your house people who you used to be good with who used to be one day a friend with who used to be the best parry and the parry in P and the people even in your family that you go to so much with, they will turn against you. For Christ's sake, you will be in a constant persecution, a constant warfare. And this is what it basically means here, that the moment you choose Christ, you shall be betrayed. Your best friend of all best friends shall betray you, not because you become a criminal, no, but because you become a Christian. Not because you're doing anything wrong. You're actually striving to do the right. And how come so much enemies start to build up now? I've seen people who... My wife is, is a living example of when you turn to Christ, what will happen? People start to change upon you. People start to say, oh, you're yeah, dependent on this God thing. You start to go on like you're better than we. 
and you're not doing that you're striving to do you're striving to live a right life you're striving to do the hard thing you're trying to get over the smoking and the drinking and the pornography watching and the masturbating you're trying now to see how best you can get married so you can be out of sexual sins you're trying your best now to live a holy life amongst the heathens Amongst people who are constantly coming against you and are coming against the character, against people who do not like you for rushing the sake and will tell you tell lies on you. You're now in a situation where people will start trying to people start to try, try, try even style you. Right? And because you're trying to live a right life, sometimes you have to look upon them and say, Maybe just pray for that person there. Because that person even knows me lit them in their face. They literally have to do that. They literally have to try to live a humble life. So many times you even get out of character. I tell some people to do, do this and do that. And then right afterwards you have to go and repent. You think it's a easy life you take on for yourself? It's a very tough life because you're living in, this, in, the, in the devil's world. You're living in the devil's system. The devils run this. The devil run this. The devil run the media. The devil run all these things. So Akin, you shall be persecuted. Your first enemies probably start off in your own household. The same people that may look on you and tell you if you stop smoke, when you stop smoke, they actually have a problem with you stop smoking. Some of them may even look on you and tell you if you turn to God and live a holy life. And the moment you start living a holy life, they don't like it. And the same one they tell you you should not do it. You shouldn't start God church. You start God church, they don't like it. This is what is happening. That's why I say that in these teachings we talk about why you should pray without cease because we're in a war. We're in a war. So for all those who cannot stay, because I feel like some people cannot really stay, ensure you go there and subscribe to the YouTube channel, alright? It's called Travis the Chosen One. And my wife and I also have a channel called TNT TV. We're going to do that. And uh, we mostly do relationship videos on that for people who are in marriages and uh, want a good relationship. Right? So you can look with TNT TV and um youtube but if you cannot find it you can just go and look for travis antonian and you'll definitely find it there and your support there will be highly appreciated and the great thing about um supporting what we're doing is that it's free of course you go there and you subscribe and you also just leave a like and share it out free of course and other people can grow and be edified we need more positivity we need more people who are taking a stand for righteousness we need more people who can, prom who can be teaching the word. We need people to pray with us. And pray for us. We need more of that. Let's, let's move it on. Let's move it along. Let's move it along now. Let's go to one more scripture. Let us go to one more scripture guys. Before we move it, move it along then. We're going to go now to Timothy. We're going to go to the book of Timothy. Timothy, the evangelist, the Thessalonians, so first Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to about verse 2, it says, I exhort thee therefore that First of all, first of all, supplications, prayers, these are all prayers same way now, intercessions, still a form of prayer, and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. You see that? The Bible said prayer, supplication, prayers, intercession, right? And thanksgiving be made for all men. We should be praying. We should be even praying for the government to start making some better decisions that can profit the people rather than the, the devil influencing them to make some decision that is that is actually bringing the people down. They come with some foolful laws and policies sometimes for wonder if they actually... They, they have sense, but they have sense. But there's a spiritual thing behind what's going on too. The devil seeks to come and rob, kill, steal, and destroy. The wicked always seek to oppress the poor. 
And so these decisions that are being made are influenced by demonic forces, guys. Everything is spiritual. Now, when, when you become spiritual, you can see through what's going on. And that's why we should, we should be praying and making intercessions and supplication and prayer and also thanksgiving. Let's read verse 2 again. It says, For kings, and so kings are rulers. So we're talking about even the rulers of this day. And for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in our godliness and honesty. And that's one of the reasons we should pray without cease. We have so much thing to be praying about, guys. And that's why we said, said pray without cease. The thing about yourself all the time is also about other people. It's also about other people. Let's finish this up now with the final one, which is the best one. Which is the best one on this journey. The reason why we pray without cease is that prayer strengthens your relationship with God. The greatest relationship that you can have in this time and space is not relationship with man, even though that's a, that's a great thing. The Bible says it's not good for a man to even be alone. So, right? So, you know, it's not good for us to be alone on, on this earth. We should have relationship, but the greatest relationship that you can have, and everybody know this, it's a no-brainer. It's the relationship that we have with, the, with our Father. So, in prayer, you're constantly communicating with God. So you're straightening that relationship. And you want to have a strong relationship with God, guys, to the point where you cannot doubt God. You don't doubt God anymore. You want to have a, a, this relationship with God to the point where you and God is speaking directly. When God says go, you go. When God says stop, just stop. You want to be such a relationship, guys, that you, that you can know God's voice. The Bible said, my sheep knows my voice, Right? You want to reach that point where you know the voice of God. Where you have such a relationship with, with him that you know his voice. True, a relationship allows the voice to be clearer. Yeah. You constantly want to have that relationship. You want to develop that relationship, that oneness. To the point where you can just feel the presence of God. You can know when God is talking to you. You can know when God is dealing with you. You can know that when you're going out there, whatever God wants you to do or not to do, you can know. I can see, you know, so I'm not going. Huh? And even though everybody is saying, you know, over the safe and over the uh, whatever, but having that relationship with God, God protect you. You want to have such a, 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 a relationship with God that you guys are one, where God know you and you know God. You know, the Bible says that many people will be casting out demons and wrecking miracles in Jesus' name. And Jesus, name, and Jesus clearly said that you should get away from me. I don't know you. You know what no mean? No in the Bible talks about re relationship. He said when, when Adam knew Eve, Eve conceived. So new is a form of oneness, a form of intimacy. This is the spiritual intimacy that Christ wants with you. So of course you probably can do all these things in his name. But what about the relationship that you guys truly have? Do you guys truly have a relationship? Do you guys truly know each other? Does Christ know you? And do you know Christ? Are you having that intimacy with Christ? Are you having that intimacy with God? Are you just doing all this work for the fluff? So you want to pray for God to know you and for you to know God. God, know me. Truly know me. More you know me. I mean, know you know me in the sense of knowing me. But I want you to know me so intimately. That when you see me, you know that I am yours and you, and you are mine. You want to seek that relationship, guys. Go on a fasting, just even for that. To say, Christ, I want you to know me. Me don't want when the day come, you say you don't know me. I don't want the great judgment come. I don't all this work. I'm even teaching on this TikTok platform. And don't want to meet you. And then I say, look. Me they teach people on TikTok, you know, God. Me they do all these things. Me they pray for them. And all that. And you're going to say, you don't know me. Guys, seek to be known by God. Just like you don't have to know God, seek to be known too. Because it's a, it's a terrible thing to see the Master, to see the Most High, to see Him and He look and you say, Get away from me. I don't know you. There was no relationship happening between me and you. There was not a relationship going on. That's why it's vitally important for us to be to be. Praying continually, guys, and talk to him like I see me. I talk to you right now, sometime. 
Sometimes you just talk to you. Now come to find a big word and say, Oh thee and thou and thou art. Just talk to him like oh, you're talking to me, talking to another friend. Just talk to him. Constantly talk to him. So you can develop that relationship. So you can develop that relationship with him. Knowing him and him knowing you. Vitally important, guys. You don't want to be so great in even knowledge about the Bible and yet you still don't you still don't know him. Because the Pharisees knew the law. The Pharisees and the, and the scribes they knew the law so much, but they never had a relationship with God. Because if they did have a relationship with God, they would know his son when his son comes. But they never knew him because they were not of him. Even though they have all that knowledge about the law, they can tell you about the Sabbath day and about that and about this and about all that. But they never had a relationship with him. They had all the knowledge about the law. They was well learned in the law. But guess what? They still never had a true relationship with the Most High. Because they saw his son and the same one slew his son. The keepers of the law slew his son. The keepers of the law set him up. The keepers of the law seek to kill his son. Why? They never had a relationship with God. At least well, that's one of the reasons. So you don't want to be saying all these things out of your mouth and your heart is not with God. You don't want to be just doing all these holy habits. Keep, you say you're keeping the Sabbath. You say you're not eat this. You say you're not eat that. Right? You say you're doing all these things. And yet, there's no relationship between you and the Most High. Develop that relationship, guys. Develop that relationship. Prayer is that way to develop the relationship. Reading the word of God is another way of developing that relationship. Because when you read the word of God, you get to know the thoughts of God. You get to know the thoughts of the Most High by reading His Word. And you find out how He thinks and how He look at things. And you can deal with your, your Father and how He thinks and how He look at things. Develop that relationship. My wife said, your art passion needs to be right. It's facts. Your art passion needs to be right. It no matter how much you know. It no matter how much you are well learned in the scripture. It no matter that. If your art passion is right, if your person is right with the most high, why it makes sense? Why it makes sense? I can say God never tell a lie. Never. God cannot lie. So whatever is in the word is true. And you learn what God requires of you. And you do it. And that's how you develop another relationship with God. Very soon we're going to talk about the topic of a relationship with the Father. We're going to talk about that topic very soon too. A relationship with the Father. So that's it for, for tonight, guys. It is truly a blessing to be here and to serve the body of Christ and to see the amount of people turn out for such a live stream and to see that people are truly being edified and perspective is being shared to the point where people are not going to take their spiritual life more seriously. The more serious we take this, the more serious God look at us. It's like vice versa. God is not seeking, God is not seeking forced love. You have to truly go after him and love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. He's not seeking robots to love him. And so, when you start consciously go towards him, you will consciously go towards you. The Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So God should that you should take the first step and he's, he's, he's readily available to take the second step. But even the one for say night. Let us recap. Pray without cease. Why should pray without cease? Number one, we are at war. Number two, it's expected. Number three, prayer keeps you in alignment. Number four, prayer builds you up. Number five, this set the order of your day. Number six, prayer glorifies God. Number seven, it's a way to empower. Power others in the faith. And number nine is straighten your relationship with God. Let's get into prayer. Almighty God, 
in the heavens of the heavens of the heavens. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we approach your heavenly throne. I pray for everyone upon this live stream once more that this lesson reach to their hearts and their mind and their soul, Lord Jesus. That they may grow, that they may, that their light may be enlightened, that their eyes may be enlightened, O oh Lord God, that their soul may be enlightened, O oh Father, on this path. I pray that each and every one may see this lesson as a reminder that they should build a relationship with you and you should come first, that I should constantly be praying to you talking to you and giving you thanks for all the good things that you have done in their life and all the good things that you shall do in their life according to your divine will according to the purpose that you have for them before the foundation of the earth mighty god i give you thanks and praise i bless your holy name for this moment i bless your holy name lord jesus christ for the blessing that you have bestowed upon me to serve the body it's a pleasure and a privilege to do so and i pray for everyone over this life right now that your spirit may fill them up lord jesus and that they may be one with you and you will be one with them that same prayer that christ prayed for his disciples i pray and you say you you don't even pray for them alone but for all who shall follow so that's the same prayer that i pray may be their portion I pray, mighty God, that you bless them and cover them. Cover their house at this moment. Cover them wherever they are by your mighty force and your mighty power. Give your angels charge over them, O Lord God. We pray that they may be protected from the hands of the wicked and from the snares and the plans and the plots of the devil manifesting even in human form. We pray, O Father God, that you protect them, guide them, direct them, and keep them that their household may be sealed by the blood of our lord jesus christ and that they may be, may be protected from the hands of the enemy from the plans of the enemy and the destiny that the enemy is planning for their life you let, let your destiny be their portion i pray for each and every one on the sound of my voice lord that your will be done in their life that they may submit to your will and do your will and do your will oh father god and glorify your name in this time and space i pray that their light will, will so shine that 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 in this world that you may be glorified that light they have given into them they have placed into them hallelujah that your light father god that daylight may may so shine O oh lord that you may be glorified that they may be a living example of holiness in this time and space lord for their family for the people who, where they work for wherever they may be oh father god i pray oh father god that your spirit may illuminate them so much that they may shine lord god and that your name may be glorified i pray for their relationship with you forgive them for whatever they have done lord whatever they have done jesus forgive them Lord, for you said in your word, whoever confessed their sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive them of their sins. And not only that, Lord, but to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. I pray, Lord, that you may forgive them and wash them clean and give them a brand new spirit, a brand new mind. Oh, Father, renew their spirit, man, in the spirit. Cleanse them from the stain of their sins, Lord. And I pray that they may become a brand new man or woman before you, Lord. And that they may walk this path and fight the good fight of faith until their until the, until day of judgment. Father God, I pray I bless their life now, and I pray that their days may be long. And I pray that I may see them, that we may all see each other when your kingdom come. I pray to see them when your kingdom come. I pray, O oh Lord God, that we all may be one in the body of Christ. That there is no spirit of competition and of emulation among us, but spirit of unity, of love, and of trust. And I pray against the works of the enemy in their life now. I pray that their works may be broken down. We shut down the works of the enemy in each and everybody's life tonight in Jesus' name. Not by my might, not by my, not by my power, but by the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. We shut down every work of the enemy now in their life, Lord Jesus. We pray, O oh Father God, that your spirit may move about their household now and cleanse it from all demonic forces and demonic oppression and suppression, Lord Jesus. Anybody that's coming through anxiety and depression, lift them up in the spirit now, Lord Jesus, and let them become brand new before your sight. And everything that I feel to say right now on their behalf, fill it up, Lord, for you know what they need and want long before we can even say it or even think it. In Jesus' name i pray this and i know it is done according to your will amen and amen amen god bless you guys god bless you and god keep you and i hope to see you
guys very soon the battery done at the right time <laughs> the battery done at the, um at the right time hold on let me have that one here but you don't have the right time but you have another one here just in case good night to my wife god bless you and god keep you and when i say my wife we're not married as yet guys but i i know she's my wife based on all the signs that god has given me all the confirmation that god has given me we're, we're not married as yet but we're working towards marriage and for all those who would like to contribute towards that as we work towards our marriage you can definitely let me know we're working towards getting our ring setting the date and all of that so for all those who would like to contribute to that it will be highly highly appreciated it will be highly appreciated to help young couples to do the right thing <laughs> to help young couples do the right thing so for all those who want to contribute to that it's highly appreciated you're welcome you can send me an inbox or let me know anything like that that will be highly appreciated the quicker we can do the right thing the better you know we don't want to leave ourselves out there um for any temptation to fall off in any way so let's make best everyone that was here again um venomous music god bless you brother prince god bless you auntie chen god bless we are faster in the building we have opal as well god bless janice god bless ever bless you are ever blessed lisa bless you sugar and super mario god bless you brother steve is in the building god bless you brother steve beverly prince you're welcome. I love to see you again. Kimbo, Sister Shirley, God bless. Paulette Williams and Narma, God bless you. We have Chana Winter in the building and God bless Child, God bless you. Patsy, Cherry and Brownie, God bless. Winsome and TT, I believe. Waldron and YouTube, God bless. And uh, Mega and all those who are in private. God bless and God keep you guys. Ashlo, God bless you as well. Remember, guys, go and support the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel, um, Travis the Chosen One, and also Travis Antonian. That rhyme. Travis the Chosen One and Travis Antonian. Don't forget that one, guys. <laughs> and until the next video, until the next live stream, I say shalom, peace, grace, and mercy from God through our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs>